have uh, the sum of squares, so again it's going to be a tangent, and the tan the x squared plus 1 then is 1 plus tangent squared secant squared. So we have square root of secant squared. And then our x squared here will be tangent squared. And the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we have secant squared, tangent squared, and then the square root here of secant squared. And so this secant would cancel one of those and leave you a secant on top, and your tangent square is there. So I think the best thing to do with this one, and this is why I thought I'd end up with doing it, is to go back to sine and cosine. Sometimes um, the dealing with the other trig functions um, becomes more trouble than it's worth. You, you can Sometimes you can be too clever by half and outsmart yourself, I think. I think this is one where it's really safer to just convert everything back to sine and cosine. Uh, when I took trigonometry in high school, which of course is a long, long time ago, I can remember my high school trig teacher saying that if you have, if you're working with identities that are these other functions and you don't see what to do, change everything back to sine and cosine. I think this is pretty good advice here. So secant is 1 over cosine and tangent is sine over cosine. So then you can um, <coughs> invert and multiply and uh, you see what you're going to have is you're going to have 1 over cosine times cosine square over sine square. So this cosine will cancel one of these. So you'll have cosine over sine square. So then if you let the u be sine, the du is cosine t dt. So this becomes du if this is u squared, okay? And then you can rewrite that with the negative exponent, and then just add 1 and divide by your new exponent. Now, you still have to get back to your x, finally. So you have minus 1 over u, so minus 1 over what you call u, which is sine. And now, to connect uh, to x, remember that you said that tangent t was x over 1. So here's t, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Here's your third side, which of course is always the radical that was in the original problem. And then if you are looking at this, sine is x over the square root. So 1 over the sine then, which of course you could say is cosecant, uh, you can just flop this over and you have your minus. So finally in terms of x you get an answer like that. So this is a problem that's not really that hard, except that you have to figure out how you're going to do your integral of secant over tangent squared. And I, I think really that this is the simplest way to do it. Well, uh, what we will talk about tomorrow is what we call partial fractions. If you have an integral to do and you have a denominator which is a product of uh, two factors, let's say you have dx over x plus 1 times x plus 2, just to make 
say something that's simple. The way that you do that type of thing, as you'll see tomorrow, is to rewrite your original fraction, which was 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 2, as a sum of two fractions, each of which has one factor as its denominator. So a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 2. So then you have to figure out the a and the b. And those are what you call the partial fractions. Uh, your high-end graphing calculators will do partial fractions for you. And of course, Maple will, or Mathematica, or MATLAB. But I'll show you an efficient way to get them uh, if you were doing by hand. So anyway, that's what the next section is about and what the class is about. So I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>